In today's video, we're going to take our existing tile map nodes and convert them into the new Godot 4.3 tile map layer nodes, as well as address a couple of little bugs and issues along the way. Hi, my name is Michael. Welcome to my 2D action and adventure RPG tutorial series. Follow along and learn how to create your own ARPG in Godot 4 using GD Script. All right, so today let's deal with this issue. I've, I've put this on probably too long, but we've got our tile maps, right? Our, our, we've created these level tile maps. It's a nice scene. So we've got everything laid out how we want the grass tile map to work. It's got a script attached that allows the camera to know how to uh, create the bounds for this area. And uh, let me just close everything else here that we don't need right now. Close these other scenes. So we've got we've got it all set up. But the problem is, is we've got this warning, the warning that there's a node configuration warning because it's the tile map node is deprecated. They've replaced it with uh, a new type of node, the tile map layer node, which I actually like quite a bit um, for simple games, especially for this example project that we're building here where we've only got one tile map layer. It, it doesn't make much of a difference to switch to the new tile map layer nodes, but once you do start using tile map layers, it, it will be kind of nice um, for those advanced use cases. But we've got to change it. Now, I want to show you what you probably shouldn't do first, okay? And I, th I think what makes sense is we go, oh, look, I've got this I've got this scene that I've saved and it's already a layer node and they've added a nice feature in here. If you, if you select your tile map layer or your, just your tile map, I should say, and come down to this little tool icon, there's an extract tile map layers as individual tire tile map layer nodes. And if you click that, then it's going to go, Oh, here you go. Here's your, here's your tile map layer nodes. And you'll notice that this, this is the new node type, a tile map layer, and it's already got the same tile set. It ported and brought that tile set over. And so let's go, okay, let's just make this the root of the scene. And, um, well, you know, um, let's, we can put the script on it maybe and change. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and delete. We don't need this anymore because we're done with that. We just got this. So if I go to my file system and, um, here I should have I should have found the folder first. Okay, so we've got our level tile map script. Let me just put it on there. And I just need to change this from tile map to tile map layer in the script. And you'll notice that that's fine. All this code we wrote will work on a tile map layer node. That seems good. Um, so so why don't we just do that? And I'll show you why we don't do that. Because when we come over to back to our level, um, let's open level one, then our levels are busted. Okay. It's going to just wipe out all the work that we've got there. Okay. So let me just revert those changes and I'll be right back to you in a second. Okay. So we're back. I've got my, I've got my tile map layer node back. There are actually two better ways to handle this. Um, or I should say two ways to handle it. So there's one that's kind of the quick and dirty. And if you've got a small project and you, and, uh, you just want to try this, you can, I'll show you the first method for replacing these. And then I'll show you a second one. And in the process of doing the second more careful way of, of updating these tile map layers, we're also going to update the script to address um, just kind of a, um, a bug or a defect with the with getting the bounds for our tile map and for our levels. Okay, so stay tuned if you want to figure out how to do that. And there will be, of course, timestamps so you can find the piece you're most interested in. Okay, so really the, the, the two ways, I mean, obviously the steps that we went through of taking this tile map and changing it to a tile map layer node are more or less correct. But we, if we do it to a scene like this, right, where we've got this scene that we've saved um, and we're changing the root type and it's got data associated with that layer, that's, that's going to mess with things. So let, let me show you the simple way first. Um, one thing that we can do that we haven't covered is even though this is an instance of our grass 01 scene, if you right click on this, there is an option. Um, let's see, to make local, it's going to be close to the bottom here. And I'm going to click this and what it's going to do is you'll notice the little scene icon disappeared. It is no longer associated with that scene. So if I update the grass of one scene, this one is now just orphaned off in its own little world. But now I could come in here and I could, um, well, I could, I could come over to the gear and I could do this extract tiles as layers. And we've got our layers 
and you can see that the layers, I'm going to go ahead and delete this note here, but there we go. It, it retained all the tiles we drew. So it's not that Godot's um, converting, you know, functionality for these tile maps to tile map layers is bad. That's not why we lost all the data associated with the tile map before. It's simply because the fact that we were doing it to a scene that we're reusing as opposed to just, uh, you know, an individual instance. Okay, so that's one way you could fix this issue. Uh, one problem here is we got to drag and drop, drop that script back onto this layer. Okay, which, you know, not not a big deal. But also now I've, as mentioned, we've severed that connection with the scene. So if I had wanted to come back to this scene and add an additional, you know, set of tiles to it that I could draw with, well, then when I come back here, I'm not going to have those available. Okay, so so let's go ahead and do this. The probably the better way, it's, it's a little bit more laborious. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a new scene that works just like this one. Okay. Um, but then we're going to have to do some copy paste, get those tiles over to the new one. And so there is that laborious part of it, but in the long run, it'll be better. And, you know, unfortunately this tile map change is, is of a nature where if you've got a long running project, you know, and you're going to be working on it in Godot 4 for maybe a year or two, I wouldn't want to continue to use the old tile map because uh, at it, you know, you could reach a point where it's deprecated or it doesn't have the features that you need that are getting released, right? So it's worth switching over to the new tile map layer node. That being said, of course, if you're doing a game jam, you're doing something short or, you know, whatever prototyping, maybe don't worry about it. You could continue to use the old tile map just, you know, for, for a shorter project like that. All right. So let's, let's dig into the, maybe the best way I think to do this. I was doing air quotes. You couldn't see the best way, the best way to handle this. Okay, so I'm gonna, I wanna find where this grass system is. I wanna go to my tile map folder. Okay, so we've got grass 01, we've got dungeon 01. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, so these are both basically the same thing, right? Just a, a prefab reusable tile layer that, that we can use that's got everything set up. What I wanna do though, is if I go back to the file system, I actually wanna, let's just start with the grass layer and I'm gonna duplicate, or the grass node, I'm gonna duplicate this. And I'm going to call it, um, I'll call it grass tile tiles. We just need a different name, right? Okay. Then when we open this scene, it looks just like the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and close this other one. So it's not confusing. In this case, I am going to come in here and I'm going to click on the little gear and extract the tile map layers as individual layer nodes, and then just right click this and, um, find that option to make it the parent, make scene root. That's what I want. And now I can delete the grass 01 here and I should rename this layer, right? So that when we place it and I'll just call it grass tiles 01, I'm going to just match, match the scene name. Okay. And then let's go ahead and, and duplicate this script as well. Uh, we, we changed, or we could change this to tile map layer and just go, but like I did in the first example, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to break any of the old things right now. So level, let's see, tile, map, uh, I don't know, <laughs> layer. Okay. I'm not sure if that's the best name. Eventually you could phase those out. But if I open this script, I want to change the class name so we don't have an issue there. And let me just change this to tile map layer. Save that. Okay. So now I can, you know, looking at this, I can take this new tile map layer and I can drop it onto my grass tiles. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay. So we've created a new scene that we can use for our grass tiles. We would want to do the exact same thing with the dungeon. Okay. So duplicate it, open it up, get that node and make it the brute and you do all that work. Okay. And then just drag the script on. You don't need to duplicate the script again. We'll use the same script for both. Um, but let's go ahead and go back to our scene of one. So how are we going to do the switcheroo over here? And in fact, um, I'm going to do it on a different scene because we already converted this one to a tile map layer and I'm going to want to replace this with my um with my new scene there but let's just go let me go back to my show and file system let me open scene two where we've got our npcs so i'm, I'm going to keep this grass 01 scene as is and i'm just going to come in here do a shift control a and do grass tiles 01 okay and then um i just want to move that all the way to the top i thought that was an easier way control and the up and down arrows kind of move the layers. Oops, I adjusted something. 
else. So like this. Okay. So let's put the grass tiles up here by grass 01. Now what I'm going to do, so you can see if I turn off grass 01, the grass tiles is empty. Okay. But I want to, I want to take this grass 01 and I'm going to select it and I'm going to come in here. And when I've got the tile map panel open, there's a, there's a little cursor or selection tool. So select the selection tool and then you just click and drag the whole level. And I'm going to do control C to copy that. Then if I come over here, then I can, uh, I should be able to do a control V. There we go. We've got all of our stuff. I have to drag and place it and click. And there we go. Now we've got a duplicated layer. Looks identical, right? But it's using the new layer type and it's keeping that scene intact. Okay. So I should be able to delete the grass of one layer and test this scene and it sh everything should work. Still have got collision with the walls. Got to throw a boomerang or two. Okay. So everything seems to still work there. Pretty good. Um, and I guess that's that. If you want to just stop right there and go ahead and do that with all your levels in your project, you can. I know it's a little bit tedious, um, but if your project is small, you'd be through this in, in just a matter of, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes or something. It shouldn't take too long. Just go through, add a new one, copy, paste, delete, repeat. Okay. Um, I do want to look at one other thing though. And I think this level is a good example of this. So there's a, there's a bug that many people had when working with, uh, the tile system in the earlier video that I did. And that bug was related to something where we had a situation and I'm going to grab my grass tiles and just grab the move tool. And let's say I had moved this tile layer for whatever reason. Okay. Not, not super important. I'm going to move it so that it doesn't interfere with my NPCs, but you know, it used to be centered on the origin right here. And now the center's clear up here. Okay. And then what happens when we do that, if we'll just look at this, the transform is no longer zero, zero. When I run this scene, um, we've got an issue because now you can see that the, the level bounds aren't working with the camera. This was a pretty common issue that I noticed a lot of people reported at some point in following the tutorial. See, it's not going to the top left properly either. And that's because our script was pretty basic and it really didn't know how to handle this transform being different. But actually the fix is extremely simple because what we're doing here is when we're getting the bounds, we're ca calculating or we're getting the position of the rectangle and we're getting the end position of the rectangle. Okay, so that's going to give us, when we look at our scene, the position is going to be whatever's at the top left and then the end is going to be whatever's at the bottom right. Okay. And so, and then we're multiplying this of course by our quadrant size and I'm going to change that today too, but then we just need to do this, not multiply, but we just need to add the position of the scene because the position is a vector two. That's all we're doing here is getting a vector two. So we can just do, or I'm sorry, not right inside here. Let me cut that out. We're going to get the rect, multiply it by this. We're creating a vector two, and then let's add the position, another vector two right out here. Okay. So first vector two stays as is, and then just add the position. I'm going to go ahead and copy that add position, paste it here. Now, when I run this level, even though I've moved the tile map around, now the bounds work properly because we've accounted for the position of the node. Okay. So very simple, easy fix that will address those issues. We do seem to have an issue with, oh yeah, <laughs> these are position funny. That's because I moved the tile map, but there we go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and reset this to zero, zero, because I like to keep it at zero, zero, but now you'll know it will work without it. And then there's one other thing I'd like to address. I was using the quadrant rendering quadrant size here to determine how big those tiles are. And in the case of this tile set that we've, we've got here, um, you can see, in fact, here's 32 pixels by 32 pixels, but the rendering quadrant size comes from in here under rendering. And so you had to set that value. Um, I chose, I chose to use the rendering quadrant size, I think, because it was easier than accessing the tile set. And then we could, you know, I don't know, not worry about what we set the tile size here. But, uh, you know, in retrospect, I think a different way that might be a little bit more friendly to handle this would not to be to use either of those, but simply to export a variable that we call uh, tile size. 
and that can just be a float and just set it to 32 by default assuming that you know if you're making a game or whatever the tile size is for your game whatever it is for one level it's probably going to be the same for the rest so you may never need to change this and then instead of using the rendering rendering quadrant size down here we could just use the tile size variable that we just created okay this doesn't change the functionality this changes how you can interface with it so now if i were to make you know if i were to go into this scene and and let's say for some reason this particular tile map was like a 16 pixel by 16 pixel tile map i could just come in here to the tile size and change it to 16 and then it would be fixed easy peasy all right and so with that, that's a quick video on how we're going to update these layers. I'm going to go through and do that with all of the scenes in my project and make sure I check that into the GitHub. Um, if, if this helped you, I hope this helped you actually. I hope this helped you resolve any issues or confusions that you had. And many of you have probably been waiting and wondering when we're going to uh, deal with this tile map, the new tile map layer node. Um, in the future, I'd like to make some videos about some fun things we can do with tile maps, and we'll be using the new tile map layer node from this point moving forward. But uh, if you've been hanging on, there you go. So drop a comment below if, if this helped you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see what's coming next. And uh, as I've mentioned, I in the past, recently I started a Patreon page, and I've got a, a good number of followers who are starting to join me. Or I say good number, it seems like a good number to me. Um, and so I'm super appreciative of them and hopeful and optimistic for what we can do in the future. So if you'd like to join that community and have access to custom Discord channels and, you know, special GitHub repositories that I make in the future and any other, you know, benefits and perks I bring out, um, head, out head on over to Patreon. You'll find the link below. And otherwise, we'll see you next time.